coming to the last session, uh, uh, session number three. We will talk about energy and uh, energy supply and production. I hope you all see uh, this slide. Um, so a major challenge in this uh, climate change mitigation is the timely access to robust energy data. They, they can underpin uh, local and regional sustainable energy policies and plans. So data sources, uh, data quality and data homogeneity differ greatly in different countries and territorial units. Uh, the key gatekeepers of energy data includes uh, public authorities uh, as the major consumers of the energy, uh, energy planning facilitators, uh, including regional energy observatories and academic institution, and uh, energy planning facilitators, also including major energy producers, consumers, consumers uh, transmission system operators, and uh, distribution uh, system operators. While EU directive restricts the sharing of individual private data with third parties, the exchange of territorial aggregated and non-identifying data needed to, for a effective uh, sustainable energy planning and monitoring at local and regional levels is, u is usually not addressed nor uh, defined. Uh, there is also no obligation within most EU country member states and national legislative framework for um, uh, transmission system operators and distribution system operators to provide local energy data to public authorities at sub-national level. Uh, as a result, uh, data exchange is only implemented on voluntary basis. However, uh, public authorities, including regional and provincial authorities supporting municipality and municipality themselves, need easier access to energy data. Uh, data can be gathered from a variety of sources, uh, including government departments and statistic, statistic agencies, uh, country national greenhouse gas inventory report, uh, university and uh, different research institutes, uh, scientific and technical articles in these uh, environmental books or uh, online as well. Uh, there is also a lot of information uh, uh, in journals, in different journals and the reports. Um, and sector experts, stakeholders, organizations. Uh, many data on energy production and consumptions per sectors, fuels and so on, are available from energy statistic reports and databases, uh, which are periodically uh, published by energy providers and agencies. So it is best to start data collection activities with uh, an initial screening of available data sources. Uh, the screening processes may be slow and require questioning until a final judgment can be made about the usefulness of data set for the inventory. Uh, in general, it is preferable to use local and national data over international data and data from publicly available peer-reviewed and reputable sources, often available through government publications. Uh, availability of information may differ from country to country and from one territorial unit to the, to the other, uh, along with data accuracy. In any way, it is important uh, that data should be from reliable and robust sources, and data should be time and geographically specific to the territorial boundary for which you are preparing, of course, the baseline emission inventory and within which you are planning to implement the measure. And of course, also the technology specific to the activity being measured. Uh, all the missing data and information uh, will have to be gained by the surveys among energy providers, uh, fuel traders, large and industrial enterprises and other consumers. Uh, I would like to say that especially industrial enterprises are very de de delicate because uh, all this information they consider as a business secret. So it's uh, they consider it as a confidential. So it's uh, sometimes it's very difficult to get data from the industrial large, especially large industrial enterprises. 
Uh, the other data have to be estimated by the extrapolating or scaling uh, and or measured, generating uh, brand new data. Uh, this could also involve physic physical measurement, sampling activities or other way and survives. In any way, surveys might be the best option for most emission sources, given the tailored data need of citywide greenhouse gas emission inventories. All through, they can be relatively expensive and time consuming without uh, proper guidance. Collecting information from every individual and en energy consumer within the local territory is not always possible or practical. Uh, Therefore, uh, a variety of approaches are likely to be needed to develop an estimate of uh, an estimate of energy consumptions. Several options uh, are available, and often a combination of them is necessary to have an overall picture of the energy consumptions within the local authorities. Uh, before starting the data collection process, it is uh, recommended to investigate if there are already national or regional mechanisms which could help to collect relevant data for the building of the local greenhouse inventory. The local authorities uh, should be able to collect accurate and comprehensive final energy consumption data related to its own buildings and facilities. Well advanced local authorities already have a full energy accounting system in place. For other local authorities who have not yet initiated such a process, the energy data collection could require uh, this following 10 steps. Uh, identify all the buildings, equipment, facilities owned and managed by the local authority. So you have to identify the delivery points, uh, the person, the department receiving the invoices. You have to organize uh, centralized collections of these documents so to be all, all in one place or all at one person. Uh, select an appropriate system to store and manage the data. So that could be a simple spreadsheet or more elaborative software. Uh, so they can be available commercially and can be used even later on. Make sure that all the data are collected and introduced in the system at least every year. So that you have uh, for all year that you have all the energy consumptions collected. Uh, Telemeasurement is also possible and is the process of the data collection. Uh, you have to note that this process of data collection may be opportunity to deal with other important energy related issues. Um, rationalize the number of energy delivery and invoicing points. Uh, renew or improve contractual arrangements with energy suppliers and initiate a real energy management process within the local territory. It is Using the software in this uh, case is also very important because the software also follows you the, all the parameters in the contracts. You know, it's not only about the energy consumptions or the amount of the energy consumptions, but also follows all the fees, taxations, uh, and other uh, financial contributions are in line with the uh, with the uh, agreed uh, contract. So it's very important to have uh, this. Uh, comprehensive and uh, constant constant uh, overview over the over the energy consumptions. Regarding heating oil or other energy carriers delivery period periodically as a bulk, uh, it is very often preferable to install measurement device, uh, different kind of meters or gog to help determine exactly of the quantity of the energy consumed during a given period. Uh, if this is not possible, it's highly recommend to have a, a larger uh, period of time uh, that you follow energy consumptions, not only for the three years, but to take a, a higher, longer period of time, maybe five or even more years, uh, so that you can uh, assess the fuel burned into the into the building and this alternative uh, assume that the fuel purchased each year is equal to the fuel consumed but we know that sometimes this is not the case but if you have a long period of time this might be a good assumptions in the fuel tanks that are filled uh, in in these different periods uh, it is important that the fuel supplied uh, for purposes of producing electricity or district heating 
or cooling are tracked and reported separately as fuel used for electricity or district heating and cooling generation. Uh, if the local authorities and inhabitants um, buy electricity from renewable sources with guaranteed origin, this will not affect its energy consumption, but it might be counted as a bonus to improve the CO2 emission factors. Uh, the quantity and the guarantee of origin can be obtained from the supplier who has to provide a certificate of origin as defined under uh, Directive 77 from 2001. Um, the local authorities should be able to collect all data regarding uh, public lighting. If this is not the case, an identification and data collection process similar to one indicated in the previous paragraph may have to be initiated. Uh, in some cases, it might be necessary to place additional meters, for instance, when electricity supply points feeds both public lighting and building facilities. How to get representative uh, sample? If all data cannot be obtained uh, in the desired format from the market operators or from other entities, it might be necessary to make some inquiries directly to the energy consumers in order to obtain the missing data. This is especially the case for energy carriers which do not pass through a centralized grid like fuel oil, wood, natural gas supplied in the bulk and so on. If it is not possible to identify all suppliers active in the local territory and to get data from them, it might be necessary to ask consumers uh, themselves. It's worth bearing in mind that energy or statistical energy agencies may already be collecting such data, so make sure the data are not available elsewhere before considering sending a questionnaire. There are several options possible uh, for sectors where there is a large number of small consumers, like the residential sector, it is recommended addressing a questionnaire to a representative sample of the population. Well, this depends on the size of the population uh, spread over the all districts of the local authorities. Uh, this questionnaire may be online on the internet, but in the case, make sure that this does not prevent some categories of customers from providing the data. Otherwise, the result will be uh, not in line with the guidelines. When working with this option, sample size calculator might be used, such as check market, uh, which will calculate the number of respondents needed in the survey using our free sample size calculator. Uh, for the sectors where the number of players is limited, it might be worthwhile addressing the questionnaire to the all energy consumers. This might be the case, for the example, for the industrial sectors. And for the sectors, if there is a great uh, number of players, but where there are some large ones like territory sector, it might be worthwhile making sure to address the questionnaire at least to all large players like uh, supermarkets, hospitals, universities and so on. Their identification can be done through knowledge, statistical or commercial, commercial data such as telephone directories, inquiry to the grid operator. Uh, also, you should ask also who are the main electricity and or gas consumers in the local authority. Another option to identify a large electricity consumer is to ask grid operators the, the identity of all consumers connected to the middle and high voltage distribution networks, or even to do even to the transmission network in some some rare cases. Uh, this is uh, example the questionnaire for the industry. Uh, this is something that you can use. We 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 develop this one in the Energy Watch uh, project. This is example. Um, we can send it to the after the session this example so that you can receive uh, this kind of examples. When we're talking about uh, renewable uh, energy, uh, data on renewable energy productions. Um, Information on the number of devices and the amount on, the, of, on electricity produced can be gathered from, uh, usually from the distribution system operators. In some cases, uh, we also there is existing some national bases 
about the, all the renewable devices which are registered into the national registration form. If there is a renewable heat production, if available, uh, solar thermal heat production and consumption could be estimated by the installations funded by these national programs. Uh, databases on funded solar thermal areas within the communities can be requested uh, at the respective administration. Uh, for example, in Germany it can be this in solaratlas.de, uh, in France, uh, odd observers, and so on. Uh, addition needs to be made by the estimation of non-funded uh, installations. Uh, alternatively, estimations could be done by the analysis of geodata or of aerial views. Uh, however, uh, here is a differentiation method to the photovoltaic installations need to be found, whether is it knowledge of the few installation areas or capacities from the electricity grid providers. And also the utilization of this uh, biogas heat needs to be requested individually at each biogas plant. Uh, otherwise, this data will not be gathered if they are not in the national register. Collection of data on local production of the energy. Uh, the data, this should be obtained by direct contact or the questionnaire with these plant managers. Uh, we are collecting here data for heat and cold produced in the local territory, energy inputs and associated emissions. Uh, if the heat and cold exported outside of the local territory and associated energy put and emissions, or heat and cold is imported from the other municipality into our local territory and associated energy put and emissions. Uh, when the heat and cold from a plant located in the territory of the local authority is partly used in the local territory and partly exported. Uh, you have to include this in your calculation of baseline emission inventory. Uh, and you have to be mindful to include only the heat and cold produced into the local territory. A similar approach should be used for the imported heat, only the heat and cold produced uh, and used in the local authorities should be taken into the consideration. In some cases, uh, this is very difficult to do so, and that's why we need some statistically and mathematical operations to use. Uh, then is one is this is extrapolations. Uh, generally speaking, data collected via inquiries should help the local authorities to construct the energy and CO2 the data related to the local territory. And this uh, aggregated data should be broken down into the sectors and the subsectors in order to target the actions and measures the result achieved by the different target groups. If the data collected do not allow distinguishing the municipal consumption from other usages, then there is a risk of double counting. Uh, and to avoid this, sub, uh, subtract the municipal usage and calculate it separately from the overall energy consumptions. Uh, extrapolation uh, is estimated based on the known facts. Uh, for example, fuel ratio obtained from the sample can be used to assess the overall energy consumption for each individual fuel. For example, if the overall energy and gas consumption for a given sector is available, but not the heating fuel for uh, fuel, uh, heating fuel for oil consumption, the electricity and fuel oil ratio or the natural gas oil ratio or the sample can be extrapolated to the whole population provided that the sample is representative. This is very important to have a, as big a sample as possible. So the data on this energy consumption per square meter or per inhabitant in the household sector for different types of the buildings and different classes of revenues can be extrapolated to the entire sector using relevant local statistic data. But once again, I would like to highlight that if you have a very representative sample, so no, you cannot do it this for one example per 100. Representing example, it, it means like a 10 samples in the population of 100. The other 
method is uh, scaling. Um, where the scaling factor represents the ratio between the available data and the required and, and, and the required uh, the scaling factor represent the ratio between the available data and the required territory data and should reflect in a high degree of correlation to variations in the data. So this scale data can be useful and relevant where data from the inventory year or specific uh, or city specific data are unavailable or incomplete. Uh, for example, uh, gaps in periodic data. Recent data are not yet available. Only regional or national data are available. Data do not align with the geographical boundary or the city of the city, or data are only available for part of the city or part of the year. Uh, the scaling factor methodology is also applicable to data collected using surveys of a representative sample, sample set and can be used to scale up real data to represent activity of the entire city. It can be used for scale down data from national and regional level to local territory for different emission sectors. Here is the uh, emission general formula for this scaling. Uh, for example, uh, this following equation may be used for adjusting household waste data if data of the inventory year are not available. Population uh, is one of the most common factors used to scale, scale data because in the absence of major technological and behavioral changes, the number of people is a key driver of greenhouse gas emission, particularly in the residential sectors. Other scaling factors such as GDP or industry yield or turnover may be more suitable to scale data for economic activities. So here is one example how to uh, calculate. You see if you have a city households waste data only for 2013, then you can uh, obtain the ratio between the city population 2014 and 2013. And from this equation, you can uh, estimate the city household waste data in uh, 2014 data, for example. You will receive all these uh, uh, presentations, so you, you will also be able to calculate by yourself uh, this kind of uh, data. Surrogate data. Uh, it is preferable to use data that are directly related uh, to the item being quantified, but sometimes surrogate data can also be used. Uh, alternative data that have a correlation with the data that they are replacing. If directly applicable data may be unavailable or have gaps. Uh, the estimate should be related to the statistical data sources that best explains that uh, for the activity for which you're gathering data. For example, mobile source emission may be related to trends in vehicle distance traveled, emissions from domestic wastewater may be related to the population, and industrial emissions may be related to, to production levels in the relevant industry. In these cases, surrogate data can help and fill the gaps. So, here is some uh, uh, example calculation, stationary fuel combustion emission, uh, getting data from representative sample set of real consumption data from surveys. While surveying for fuel consumption for each subsector, determine the built space, like uh, square meters of office space and other buildings characteristics of the survived buildings for scaling factors. Uh, Modeling energy consumption data, you should determine energy intensity by building or and or by facility type expressed as energy use per square meters. This is very common um, form of expressed uh, use, expressed energy use per square meter annually per square meters uh, or per unit of output. So you can play the role of how you're going to present. You know, in some cases, in industrial cases. They use uh, energy consumptions per product, per type of the products, and so on. Uh, in case of this incomplete data, uh, where fuel consumption data by subsector are unavailable, but data are available for total emissions from stationary sources within the city, 
a portion by the total build space for each subsector or build type. Where data are only available for a few of the total number of fuel suppliers, determine the population or other indicators such as industrial output, floor space, and so on, sort by real, by real data to scale up the partial data for total citywide energy consumption. And where the data only available for one building time, determine a stationary combustion energy intensity figure by using build space of the build type and use a scaling factor with build space for the other buildings. And also you can scale it down in case of regional or national fuel consumption data available, then you can still scale it down using the population or other indicators within the uh, municipal you're calculating for. I hope this was clear because it's <laughs> relatively complex, um, but these are very, very statistically and mathematical uh, methods. Um, I'll try to present it in a simplified way. Sometimes we use, use we we try to use also the we are subcontracting the experts outside of the our uh, organizations to find, to help us to to determine some. Um, uh, to assess some cons energy consumptions and other parameters. So we finished with session three. Mm -hmm.